Joe a little bit better. And so I've got Steve calling in on Skype. It should be any second now. Steve calling in on Skype. And while we're waiting for him to ring in, welcome. This is the weekly Mule and Donkey uh, weekly Mule and Donkey show with Steve Edwards. My name is Dave. Steve will be here in a few moments. And so while we're waiting for him, uh, I just want to say glad that you're here. Oh, he's calling in. Let's get him right there. Hey, Steve, we're live. Uh, something's going on here. We got gremlins in there. Or something. Something's going know. on fishy, but hey, we're live. Folks can see us and let me make uh -oh. sure that they can see you. There we go. And hey, all right. Now everyone can see us. We're here, here we are. and we're ready to talk mules and donkeys, aren't we? Except for I don't have any coffee. Oh my goodness. He doesn't have any coffee. I, come along I coffee. Got, it's just supposed to come along with you. Yeah, I got some come along coffee right there on the counter. You know, I, we had all these defugalies and my well, coffee. Well, go grab the coffee. I'll tell folks what's going to happen. Go grab your coffee. You will. I go grab your coffee. coffee. So here's what's going to happen, come folks. Come coffee. Yeah. yeah we oh. are going to talk mules and donkeys for an entire hour today. Where else in the world can you show up at a 3 o'clock Mountain Standard Time and talk mules and donkeys for 60 straight minutes? I know no other place. This is the only place. I think it's happening. And so we're glad that you're here with us making it happen. So here's how it works. There's really only three things we ask. First is that you let us know that you're watching. Type in the comment section, put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like today, just so that we can see you, say hello, and uh, know that you're there with us. Because Steve and I, we can talk, excuse me, we can talk anytime we want. But we are here to talk with you about mules and donkeys. So that's the first thing. Let us know you're watching. The second thing is ask any and every mule and donkey question that you've got. Because if you're thinking it, someone else is probably thinking it. And if you don't ask it, there's a good chance it's not going to get answered. Almost inevitably, it's not going to get answered. So ask any and every question that you've got. And it doesn't matter if we've talked about it before. Because one of the beautiful things about mules, donkeys, and this equine life is that it's repetition and it's doing the same thing, but maybe from a different perspective, maybe from a different angle. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing that we ask is that you share the broadcast. And that's really easy to do. If you're on YouTube, just copy the link, send it to friends and family via email. If you're on Facebook, go ahead, click the share button. And that share button, put it posted on your page and tell folks what you love about the show. Or you can just go ahead and tag friends and family in the comment section and say, hey, Come check this out. Uh, we've got Stephanie watching from Missouri, 70 degrees. Sounds pretty good. Beth is watching. Beth, you and I have been messaging back and forth. Thank you so much for being so awesome to chat with. I know you've been talking with Steve too. Happy Wednesday from Central North Carolina. Gorgeous, 64 degrees. We've got Sandy watching. Sandy's watching from uh, Missouri, warm weather. We've got, uh, San, uh, Brazil watching howdy from Enoch, Utah. It's around 50 degrees and windy as heck. And we've got Steve Edwards watching from Queen Valley Mule Ranch with a big box of coffee right there in his hands. That coffee is ready for all you folks. You know that, right? When you come to the ah, clinic man, this so Saturday, good. this weekend, there's going to be come along coffee straight from coffee by David. Ooh. It's going to be so good. That's what Steve's got in his coffee cup right now, and it is tasty as all get out. Polly is watching yeah. from Barnesville, Minnesota, 40 degrees and beautiful. Susan is watching from Kingman, Arizona. It's sunny, but super windy today. Ugh, she says. We've got Kathy watching. Beautiful and sunny here in Elephant Butte, New Mexico. I am learning so much from you guys. I don't have a mule yet. Kathy, you're doing things in the exact right order. Folks say... I want to get a mule and donkey. What should I do first? Exactly what you're doing. Learn, show up, ask questions, read, educate yourself, because that is going to make for a wonderful homecoming for your mule. Heather and Savannah are watching from Oakdale, Tennessee. Finally have some beautiful weather. Kimberly is watching from Gilbert, Arizona. Windy is all get out. Kathy from Dickinson, North Dakota. It is sunny, 60 degrees, up from 30, negative 30 a couple weeks ago. So I'm guessing she'll take 60 degrees any time of the year when we're talking negative 30. All right, Steve, what do you say we get into answering a few questions? Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so last week we talked a little bit um, – we talked a little bit about, actually, we talked a little bit about a lot of things. 
Um, one of the questions that came through was from Jarvin, and Jarvin says, uh, do you use a curb chain with your Martingale Snaffle? So do you use a curb chain with your Martingale Snaffle? What's a curb chain, and do you use it? Okay. A curb chain goes, it attaches on both sides of the bit, and it goes down underneath the chin, and it communicates to the nerves underneath the chin. And a curb chain, I use a double uh, chain on there. And so it's about that wide, roughly, as wide as my two fingers, on the bottom. And I've got nylon straps on each side because nylon lasts longer than leather. No, I do not use a curb chain on a snaffle bit. A curb chain is meant to be able to use, remember I talk about ask, tail, demand. When I pick up on my reins, the bit communicates to the roof of the mouth. Okay, now this is a finished bit. I pick up on my, my reins, it com the, the bit communicates to the roof of the mouth. And then I kind of pick up a little bit more. So I ask and I pick up a little bit more with my reins and then it works on the bars of the mouth. And then the third part is the demand when the chain hits the nerves. Now I want to stay away from underneath here as much as possible. So the reason uh, that people put curb chains on snaffle bits is because they pull too hard. They say, I pull the bit through the mouth. And I say, why did you pull so hard? Well, I want him to move. Well, why don't we be patient and wait? So my hands are here and I turn my wrist and I'm going to go to the left. So my hands are here. Notice my hands are now here. My hands are now here. My hands are, here's the horn. My hands are above the horn. One fist. And my hands are, so I turn my, my, that's my direction. And I go impulsion. Both hands go at the same time. This hand does not go past the horn. So I'm here, goes here, that's all. If you pull past the horn, you've got to pull the bit through the mouth and you're over pulling the mule, you'll teach the mule to run through his shoulder. But if we do this, direction, impulsion, and we wait, and we wait there, and we wait there. Pretty soon, the mule drops his head. I go back to center again. And then I turn my hands immediately. Direction, impulsion. Now the mule's gonna think, all right, when you give direction impulsion, you're going to let go of me as soon as I drop my head. Well, that's partially right, because he's going to drop his head, and he's going to think, well, now what am I supposed to do now? You're supposed to let go of me. Then all of a sudden, he tips his nose. I go back to center, and I wait. And then I go back and do it again. My right hand, left hand direction, right hand impulsion, and I'm going to the left, and I wait. Now he's thinking, I'm going to drop my head, tip my nose to the left, and you're going to let go of me. No, I'm going to wait there. And he's thinking, all right, got to find a way out of here. Because now I'm here like this. I'm uncomfortable. My head's tipped. What am I going to do? And all of a sudden, he moves his neck and shoulder. When he does, I quit. That's three to the left. Then I do the same thing, three to the right. You will see this this weekend. You're going to see me talking about And you're actually everybody get their hands on reins. And everybody is going to be able to train on somebody there, but you won't be training on a meal. There'll be some of you training on meals and you'll get a chance to feel what that bit feels like in your hands. So do I use a curb chain? No. The reason people do it is because they over pull and they pull the bit out of their mouth. Awesome. Hey, Steve, real quick. I'm having a little bit of co connectivity issues. I'm going to turn off my camera. Folks will still okay. be able to see me. You just won't be able to see me. Okay. So that'll help me a little bit, uh, conserve some I bandwidth. Yeah. What's that? I see you enough as it is. Yeah, you see me enough as it is. So one thing real quick no, that Steve it. mentioned there was that uh, uh, you're going to see me this weekend. What in the world does he mean you're going to see him this weekend? Well, if you haven't heard, this weekend we are doing the first live clinic at the ranch for 2021. And it is going to be awesome. We've got all of our participant spots sold out. But what we still have is spectator spots. Now, Steve, real quick, I haven't asked you this yet. 
What's the last day that folks can purchase tickets? Because I know you and Susan have to prep for everybody to come there. What's the last day that they can purchase tickets? Yeah, it's actually uh, tomorrow. You know, if we had somebody come in, you know, purchase one on Friday, we'd go ahead and do it. We, Susan mainly is, buy, is, is trying to have enough groceries for everybody, and we want to make sure we've got enough room for everybody. So tomorrow, after, tomorrow afternoon's pretty much it. We will take it till about maybe nine o'clock on on Friday, but after that we're going to be smoking busy around here. So really, I guess I should say, David, it ends Thursday night. Let's yep. just do it that way. Yep, there we go. So don't show up to the ranch on uh, on Saturday thinking that you'll buy a, a ticket there uh, because we're not doing it that way. the The way that we're doing it is you've got to purchase by tomorrow evening and then after tomorrow evening yeah. we're going to take the order form down and that's going to be it so if you want to show up if you want to be there go ahead and order right now it is wickedly affordable it's it's almost offensive yeah. how inexpensive it is for you to come out hang out with steve hang out with other folks i'll be there i'll be the guy with the camera and the spiky hair poking out from back behind the camera it'll be good to meet you good to see you it's going to be a lot of fun so that's a great that's a great segue into um, into our next question, or actually comment, so to speak. So um, Nina, Nina, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so Nina, correct me if I said it incorrectly. Thank you, Steve, for everything you do for us on YouTube. Love watching you all live and answering questions. I had my boy Jack at nine months gelded, and he did fine. At first, the vet said he never seen so much fat in the scrotum area and was concerned about him. Maybe he had a hernia. Who knows? But he made it, and all of the insides healed fine without a problem. Thank God. He turned 10 months today, our little BOGO. It's getting fly season here again in Florida, 77 today. I am like ready to get fly blocks set up now. I wormed them two months ago, so they're all set. Grass is growing in the field, so we don't feed them too much grain now like in the winter. And hey, God bless. Take care. They are doing fine. I want to start putting on his halter and leading him around now. Got him picking feet up comfortable. Me uh, reward him with a treat for me and reward him with a treat, but he needs a training badly. And I'm the only one around here who can do it. So I share that Steve, she just gave us an update right there, but, um, she gave a lot of detail. I just wanted to give you an opportunity just to comment on what she's doing and what folks can take away. Cause she does sound like she's doing a good job there. Yeah. I mean, she, yes, she is. I mean, you know, she's trying hard, uh, and, and doing the right things with feed and this sort of thing. I pretty much like to tell you folks, no grain. Unless you are training, unless you are actually working, then they can burn the, the, the grain off. These mules and donkeys don't need to be standing around and eating grain. The fat on the scrotum, guess what? That is from the grain, especially if you're feeding whole oats. These mules can get fat pockets really good, really super easy. And the downside of it is this. Their fat pockets will end up being across where you're going to put your saddle or the top crest of the neck and this sort of thing. But being on the scrotum, that's not unusual for a donkey at all. Uh, it's mainly because of high carbohydrate feeds. So stay away from the high carbohydrate feeds. Next thing, halter is not important at this point. Uh, you should be using the come along hitch everywhere you go. Do not tie up with a come along hitch. Don't ever tie up with a, with a come along hitch. Now, can you tie with a halter? Yes, so you work with the come along, get them going good, and then put the halter on, and then tie them up if you're gonna do that. That's fine, okay? But otherwise, for me, I prefer not to tie my colts up. I don't usually tie them up until they're about two years old. Uh, here's the problem. If they pull back, they got a chance of pulling the, the neck bones out of place, they got a chance of pulling the shoulder out of place because they jerk back and they hit that hard spot. And then you could also have backbone and this sort of thing out of place. So I do not tie my babies up. I wait till they're about two years old. And then when I do tie, I tie wither high. That's as high as I want. That way, when they pull back, they pull back even. And, and that works good. So, but I tell you, if you train them with a come along hitch, when you're getting ready to do all your brushing and everything, you would see it at my ranch. When we're training, 
we rarely use the hitching post. The only reason we use the hitching post is because they have to get used to being tied. And we start the hitching post, and then we use the hot walkers, which you will see, and then we use the side of a trailer. But when we first start our foundational training, we always come along rope, come along rope, and we teach them the ground tie. So we come up to the to the uh, hitching rail. We do not tie them at the rail. They learn to stand there. We drop the, the come along rope as our ultimate goal. And then we do our brushing, our picking up the feet and everything. So there you are. Awesome. Uh, we've got uh, Tanya watching from Old Town, Florida, 60 degrees. Ro Roger is coming to us from Milan, New York, 46 degrees and sunny. Heather and, Sa and Savannah from Oakdale, Tennessee, finally have... Uh, beautiful weather. Uh, Kathy from Dickinson, North Dakota. Uh, Ron in Virginia from Ohio. The weather is warming up. We got a question in here from Kelly. Kelly or Stephanie Kelly says, when leading my mule, he keeps his distance but keeps his ears flat back. And when we stop, his ears go straight up. How do you read this? Well, usually if they got their ears flat back like that, that means they're not happy about something. And uh, I, are you leading him? What are you leading him with? What type of halter? What type of uh, lead rope are you leading him with? So what would, what, would, what would you want to be leading them with? What, is there a particular I, thing that she wants to avoid? Yeah, well, you want to avoid using a halter. You want to avoid using a chain. You want to avoid using uh, an improperly adjusted rope halter. Of course, my thing is always come along hitch first, okay? Uh, and that's what I lead them with. Then if we get a bump and fix the you happy with pinning the ears back flat like that. Hey, Steve, do a quick, uh, do me a quick favor. Can you close on your computer? Can you close the Chrome application? It keeps getting choppy, and so I'm trying to figure out how we can do it better. So you got Chrome and uh, down there, can you turn that off, and we'll see if that helps with the connectivity a little bit. Uh, thank you, Kelly. Appreciate that, uh, Stephanie. Uh, Angel is watching. We've got Herschel watching. Sunny and warm in the kingdom of Callaway, Missouri. I like that all right. Richard Pitts, Palestine, Texas, in the 60s. We've got Eileen watching from Nebraska, 65 degrees and sunny. Cinda is watching from upstate New York. Jim is watching from Old Town, Florida. Melissa, uh, Kiki, uh, howdy, gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, Kiki here in Chiloquin, Oregon, sunny, 54 degrees. So glad we're all back. Absolutely. Nancy is here. It says, uh, watching from Tennessee, new to mules got, oh, Hey, new to mules. There we go. Got a nice mule. I really enjoy riding, but ride on the road. And some of, uh, he spooks at motorcycles and trailers. Anything that comes by rattling has not took off yet. As I ride with a friend that has a calm horse, this is running my rides, please ruining my rides. Please help. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, I just had this conversation with a lady today. Um, and I, I, did I lose you or we got you there? There we are. Yeah. So here's, let me just give you an example. You are riding an equine. An equine is flight because of fright. Okay. And, and it's, it's part of life. Let me just give you an example. My wife of 52 years, she's in her kitchen and she's working away in the kitchen, getting ready for dinner on her, in her own little world right there. Right. She knows I'm in the house. All of a sudden, I got a question for her and I come in the house. I come around the corner in the kitchen and I say, honey, she goes, ah! wait a minute. She knew I was in the house. What happened? Well, I surprised her and it, and it kind of it took her off guard. Well, you're going to have the same thing with your mules, uh, with your horses, with your donkeys, everything. You're going to have those. And the reason that is, is because it, it, it catches them off guard. About the time they relax, then comes along the noise. Bang. You cannot desensitize and get this word in, out of your brain. You cannot desensitize these mules. You can train them so that when... Uh, you put a cue on them. For instance, when they when they start to booger and take off, you take your reins and you go right, left, right, left. That's ask, and then increase the intensity. Right, left, right, left, right, left. 
tail, and then really, really go at them. But you can't, cannot take away what is natural for them, flight because of fright. Remember, they're an equine. That is their prime weapon, their prime thing for leaving what they perceive as a problem. Will they get better? Yes. But you as a rider have this to do. This is what you have to do. You have to stay calm, relaxed, and look straight ahead. Don't look for the problems because that's unfortunately what people do. They say they got a creek and the mule won't go across it. So you're looking at the creek. You put into that mule all the energy thinking, oh, this is going to be scary. No, relax. Put your hands down. Look straight ahead. When all of a sudden you see the mule's head elevate, you go right, left, right, left. The head should drop. If the do head don't drop, increase the intensity. Ask, right, left, right, left. Tell, demand. Blah, 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 and the head should drop. Now, do not practice this on the road. Practice it at home. So you're at home, okay? And you're sitting in the saddle. You're going to go right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, left. And you should see the mule's head drop. Okay? So the next thing I need to know is what type of bit are you using? All right. We'll, uh, we'll come back around. We'll see what Nancy says. Real quick, Steve, this is a cool one coming in. Beth, who's one of our new friends out on the East Coast, says, just wanted to say to anyone on the fence about making a tack purchase from you guys to go ahead and do it. I am so impressed by your level of service and interaction with clients. I'm still figuring things out, but I know that with you alongside, I'll get there. You literally have resources to address any question. I've learned to shut my trap and watch your videos nine out of 10 times. Problem solved after watching. Grateful grateful to you. Beth, thank you so much. We are we just are glad that you gave us the opportunity to help. That's pretty awesome. How about that, Steve? Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Is this Beth Meredith? Yeah, it's Beth Merritt. Hi, Beth. Good to hear from you. Folks, listen, this is really important to Dave and I, really important. You know, Dave's my media guy, and I've known this, this kid a long time. He's like a second son to me. He has done wonders, wonders uh, for, for getting me out there to help you guys. Uh, I mean, the website that he put together, taking the – this takes time. Putting this one-hour program on, we're even trying some new things. Uh, so one of the reasons we're a little bit late. But 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 Beth, I am here for you. If you need an answer, you call me. Any of you, please. Uh, I just talked to a guy in New York today, and he'd ask about how to, when his saddle be done, and and I called him up on the phone and I said I'm actually putting the barcode label on your box right now, and he says you're kidding. You this isn't really Steve Edwards, is it? And I said, yes, sir, it is. He says, you're actually working and talking with me, too. I said, yes, sir, I'm here for you. You know, this is what I like to do. Uh, you know, and Dave is able to give me this ability to be able to go and talk with you guys. Uh, I talk with people all over the world. You know, people in, in Australia, I've, I've sent stuff to Ireland and all over. I get to talk to a lot of people, but I want to help you. These mules are different than the horses. Soon as horse people start using my mule tack or start doing things uh, like I like to ask them to do, horse people, it, it just, they, they can't handle the pressure because it's so much more different. You use a rear cinch? Yes, I do. Well, ain't you worried it's going to buck? No, I'm not, you know. Uh, and and they, they, you put your saddle too far back. Oh, no, that saddle is right where it needs to be because this is a mule, you know, and, and on and on and on. But so I'm here, you know, if you guys... Uh, need me, call me, you know, text me as well. And I'll go from there. And then this weekend, Dave is going to be shooting footage. He's gotten really good at it. You all are about to see some awesome stuff. Not patting myself on the back, but everything is going to be hands on. I don't pre set up anything. When I touch that mule or I talk to that person, it's it, you get to see the actual what happens. So please call me. Let me help you. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate the the pat on the back.
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it is 100% true. Uh, a lot of the emails all wound up, uh, I wind up answering because Steve and I have talked about them. I said, well, Steve, you talk about this so much. Let's do a quick video or let's write an article. And so it's literally Steve speaking to you. It just so happens that he and I sat down for four or five hours and wrote an article. It just so happens that We took 15, 20 minutes to record a video because it's a frequently asked question, but uh, he's absolutely correct. Anytime I say, well, we could try it this way. He said, nope, I want to talk to the people. I say, okay, let's make sure we keep keep those conversations going. So glad it benefits you, Beth. We're so grateful for it. Greg is watching from Ohio. Best day this year. Awesome. Glad to hear that, Greg. Mary is watching from Arkansas, 67 degrees. She says, my mule Millie is jumping out, meets me like a dog when I come home from, uh, from work. Do you have any suggestions? Well, that sounds like a happy mule. Uh, any suggestions uh, for them jumping out to come and meet her? Jumping out of the corral? Get I mean, boom, boom. that's what I'm thinking. Oh, <laughs> or either that goodness. or jumping out and surprising uh, her. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't want that sort of thing. No. Okay, um, let me just kind of touch on something here. It's really important. I remember our first uh, caller says she's got this young jack. She just had castrated, and she's using treats to... Uh, to get the mule to the donkey to do things folks that's okay for a tiny little bit but i prefer if i'm going to use a treat it's going to be the one that's hard to catch and then i'm going to wean them off of that here's the problem and all right now i'm going to shock you some of you listen to this i've had a client that used to put a carrot in her pocket right here and the mule would come up and get the carrot oh that was the cutest thing in the world one day the carrot was not there. Her breast was. Yes, yeah, she had to have breast surgery. Okay. Uh, one of my clients used to think it was really cute to put a cookie in the mouth and give it to him. One day the nose was there and the cookie wasn't. You know, uh, I can tell you about bites of people and things like this. Folks, stay away from treats and stay away from the clicker training is dog and pony show stuff folks uh it it yes it does fun things that you like to do but listen work on the things that are natural to the mule so that when you're on the trail and you got a mule running off use those type of techniques so let's go back the jumping out of the corral uh, that can be extremely dangerous uh is it pipe corral and i, and I like to know that uh, uh a couple of different things you can you can do, but uh, let me know if it's a pipe corral. I need to know that, and then how high it is. All right, we'll keep moving right along. Mary, go ahead and put that in there. We've got Andrea watching from Altoona, Florida, 70 degrees and nice. Cindy watching from Tennessee, 65 and sunny. We've got Linda the mule servant and Theo the sweet one-eyed mule in sunny springtime central Ohio. Glad to have you here, Linda. Ross is watching, 55 in Emmett, Idaho. Julie is watching in Kentucky, 60 and sunny. Jack from Johannesburg is checking in, 35 degrees and overcast. Jack is in New Mexico, currently 63 degrees, question regarding supplements. I'm just getting ready to start my horse supplements from Smart Pack for bugs as well as vitamin A and E. Can I give Annie the same to fight against bug bites and skin care? Uh, uh, you know, I don't know much about that particular product. I can tell you that some mules can really be allergic to to the, the, the fly bites and things like this. Uh, we have uh, uh, a person, uh, what's the name of it, uh, Dave, that oh, does- Oh, um, uh, El, El, uh, Espana. Yeah, Espana, uh, that has some natural products that people seem to really love and do well with. My favorite thing uh, is a good fly mask to protect the eyes because these mules can really get eat up uh, with the flies. And and I have used WD-40. It works well. It's an oil base, but it does. The flies don't like it, and they stay off of it, especially underneath their chest and on their legs. I have their legs be solid blood spots from, uh, um, from the bites of the flies and stuff so much. Here's what I like to tell folks to do. Get your, get your veterinarian to do a hair follicle test, 
or maybe you've got locally a, uh, a vocational a educational college or something like this that can do things with equine. Anyway, do a hair sample or a blood test. That'll tell you what vitamins and minerals your mules are, are lacking. Now, your hay does not supply all of that. So you are going to need it uh, for sure. And that's the way I would do it. Don't buy a mineral block thinking that that is going to take care of your mineral problem. It is not, okay? Mineral block uh, is not worth the price that you're spending. Just buy a good salt block and call it good. Your, your, the extra money that you're spending for that mineral block is a waste of money. But get your hair follicle test and go from there. Now, there's a lot of products, folks, <coughs> that works really good on horses, but don't work on mules. And the reason that is, we got the donkey side. You've got a hybrid. And so even giving mules uh, their. Looks like we lost Steve there. Let's see if we can get him back. I know we are having some internet connectivity issues. Steve, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Steve? So we lost him. Um, the Espana Silk, I went ahead and I put a link to that in the comment section. If this is the first time you're ever watching, as we talk, um, we reference products, videos, articles, all sorts of good stuff. And I put links in the comment section so you can actually go in and find those products and find those services that we're talking about. So I put a link to the Espana Silk in there. And while we're working on, I'm gonna send Steve a, a text message here, let him know that we lost him. He's, you know, if, we, if I don't tell him, he may think that we're, he's like, because he can't see me, right? Uh, hey, Steve, we lost you. Restart your, your computer. Okay, there we go, we lost it. Um, so I'm gonna have him restart his computer. Uh, so while we're waiting for him to come back, um, uh, this Saturday is when the clinic begins. It's a two day clinic and you can come for both days or just one day. And, uh, I'm putting a link in the comment section right now. And there are spectator spots remaining spectator spots. And so, um, the clinic is one of the only times during the year. As a matter of fact, it's the only time during the year that the ranch is open. It's a, it's a private ranch. It's closed to the public. And during clinics, when folks purchase tickets ahead of time, they're able to come in and it's a fantastic time. And uh, I've been a part of probably about six or seven of these over the last 10 years. Of course, Steve does clinics all over the country, right? Um, a lot of you have met him at the clinics that he's done all over the country, not in this COVID world, but prior to that. So all the clinics that have happened here, I've had an opportunity to show up and be a part of many of them. And it's a great time. We get together and what usually happens right at the beginning is we all stand around in a circle and Steve just kind of starts taking inventory of what folks are talking about and gives a, uh, a heads up as to, hey, here's the things that we're going to go through. And so the last one that we did together, uh, he started telling some stories and just talking about the mule and the donkey uh, attitude in general, just what they were all about and what makes them different. And that's a really good time. And then we go into the actual uh, participant and spectator you know, experience. And so everyone comes with the problems. All of the participants come with their animals and they come with the different problems. And I'll tell you what, it got problems ranging from front to back, side to side, all over the map, different types of things that we're going to work through, which is great because almost all of the spectators who are there are experiencing the exact same things in one way, shape or form. And so we'll go one by one addressing the problems. And there will be some times where there's a little bit more attention during some of the breaks. Steve will work with some people individually during a, a little break here or there. And eventually we make our way all the way to um, demonstrating different tack that people wanted to see. We get I've been getting messages um, all over the last uh, two weeks about saying, will the store be open? Will the store be open? Will the store be open? Steve's been working hard to make sure that everything is there on site, ready to be experienced, touched, seen, felt. 
And so that's where we'll go through in all of the questions that folks have about the different tax. Steve will start going through and answering those. We'll do a break for lunch and then we'll come back and we'll just pick up where we left off. So it's a really good time. It's a lot of fun. There's plenty of time to chat and talk and quite frankly, a lot of good time with Steve himself. He, 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 there's not so many people there like some of these big events where he's very spread thin and he can only have a few minutes. Uh, his attention is on the day from start to finish. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, if you're not able to be there, a lot of folks have been asking, hey, I'm not able to be there. Are you going to record it? We are going to record it. I'm going to be there, spiky hair and all recording the uh, entire clinic and I'm not sure what we're going to do with it yet. We may turn it into a brand new video. We may turn it into YouTube videos, but we're going to record it and um, it's going to be a fantastic set of videos no matter what way we use it. So um, I haven't heard back from Steve yet. Um, I sent him a message. He's probably restarting his computer and getting going. Um, a couple things that I want to bring to your attention. If you have now, if you're on YouTube, you're there right now. You see it, right? You see that we have an amazing YouTube channel, but if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, I want to encourage you to do so. Hop over to the YouTube channel, get subscribed because we're about to be uploading a whole bunch of new videos there. And folks, all the videos that we put on YouTube, these, these are videos that folks wind up charging for in all their instructional DVDs and instructional videos. So I would say get over there and check out the YouTube channel. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, let's do a YouTube and let's share my screen. Y'all can see it right there. Let's go to Queen Valley Mule Ranch right here, your channel. And you can see right here, all of the different videos that we have. We've got, uh, of course, all of our live videos are there. So you can go back. Um, we've got how to use, uh, let's see, mechanical hackamore. We've got uh, longest rope used for hobbling and feeding. We've got uh, do mules kick harder than horses question and answer. Leather cinches as a second cinch. Um, building a foundation with mules and donkeys. Uh, do not make modification to Steve's mule saddle. Talk about that. Castrating and imprinting and mule care. Just all sorts of great stuff. We scroll down further. We've got what is a sur single? What does it? What is a sur single? What does it do? Why you need good boots and spurs? What's the difference? Just all sorts of good stuff. So be sure to go check out the channel. And then when you're there, make sure you click the subscribe button up top uh, because that'll let you know, number one, when we go live with any of these broadcasts. But number two... Uh, it's going to let you know when we have a brand new video come out and a uh, brand new video come out and it's available for watching. So uh, there's that. Let's just go back through and let's make sure that we've said hi to everyone who's come through. We've got uh, David Cantor's uh, watching from Port Angeles, Washington, 47 degrees and cloudy. We've got Wayne watching from Alabama. I got an 11 month old mule. Do I need to up the protein in the feed and how much is too much exercise? I would like to piney him, pony him when we go out riding. So we'll ask Steve that when he comes back, but this leads me to, we've got a great video. Um, we've got a great video all about Feed. Now, feed is something that we've had more questions about than just about anything out there. And so um, I want to send you all Feed Talk Mule. I want to send you all a link to creating a, um, a feed and nutrition program. Steve just sent me a message. He said he lost internet for a few minutes, plugged it in. Now we have internet. So he'll be calling in in a second. Get Steve's Feed Talk talk video for free. So this video right here, this is Steve and James uh, Weatherford, uh, formerly of um, Lake and Milling. Uh, this is Steve and James talking all about what your feed program needs to include. So we'll get to, uh, we'll get to this question about, um, about feed program in a second. Uh, uh, let's see, let me get back to it here. Uh, Find it. Yeah, this makes for some great video, right? Just the Skype sign on the side. He should be calling in any second, y'all. I apologize for the delay. Uh, missed call from Steve. Okay, let me try one more time here. Okay, I'm calling him. We'll see if the man, the myth, the legend picks up. Let's see. So Wayne, we'll get to your question as soon as Steve picks up the phone. Waiting. Hey, there he is. Hey, there he is again. 
Lost the internet, it sounds like. Yes, yes, we did. I went in and unplugged it and plugged it back in, and we got a, a lot of wind right now. It's pretty stormy and nasty out here. Uh, I answered all the questions, so we're good, Steve. We'll see you later. No. <laughs> I went to the first question, and I was like, okay, I know a few things. Maybe I can answer. And the first question, I was like, well, we got to wait for Steve to come back because <laughs> I don't know oh. the answer to this one. So we'll hop right back into it here. Uh, this one was from Wayne. Uh, Wayne uh, is watching, says, I got an 11-month-old mule. Do I need to up the protein in my feed? And how much is too much exercise? I would like to pony him when I go riding. What would you say to Wayne? Okay, ponying is good, but let's go back. Let's do a halter foundation first. Okay, here's here's what we got to do, folks. Um, uh, let me shut this thing off here. It was as I was talking, I just sent you a long email, which done nothing. I mean, text. <laughs> it's all good. You know? It's all good. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back. What we don't want to fo do, folks, is let's just give this picture on riding. That's the end goal. Let's do, let's work to get to the end goal. Now, leading on on a pony. Okay. Before we hurt this mule, and what I mean by that is this. We're leading, we're doing good, we're thinking we're doing good, but the mule is pulling back and jumping back and everything. Don't you think you could be straining some muscles, some tendons? Don't you think you could be creating some problems? Yes. So what am I saying? Do the groundwork first. Do all your groundwork. Get the get the the your eleven month old or your three year old used to being worked with a come along hitch and being very responsive and easy to touch. Folks, just because you can lead them from A to B doesn't mean that you can lead them on a, another animal to pony them. That's the icing on a cake. Build the cake first, okay? Get all your groundwork done right first. And when I say do your come along work, you know, you can also do things uh, like take an, and shake a, a, a bag or something like that. And when they booger back a little bit, give them a bump. Remember, they're an equine. Flight and fright can move pretty quick. So you got to be prepared for that. But, but first, get them solid in a in good halter foundation. Um, okay, Steve, I was looking at a couple of the other things going on. I just want to make sure, did you talk about the protein in the feed? We did not get to that. We okay, start, so, I started to do that before we went back. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I got an 11-month mule. Do I need to up the protein in the feed? Um, and how much exercise is too much exercise? Okay. The big problem that we have with our babies is bowing tendons is one thing. So it's really easy to get a bow tendon even with the older animals. But our, our, our exercising, these animals love it. So go for walks uh, and with them. Uh, I don't do much round pin work at all. You can do some round pin work if you want to do some come along work and this sort of thing. But they love it. You know, the big thing is I always like to be able to check my heart and respiration. You know, when I see my nostrils flaring, I've kinda, I'm kind of at a place where I have to quit. Uh, but, but just enjoy it. Pick up their feet. That's the biggest thing that you want to do. Pick up their feet all the time. And the other thing is, the major thing that you need to do that people don't seem to do is make sure you trim them every six to eight weeks. Look, when you balance their feet and they're correct, you're going to have straight legs. Very few mules out there today have straight legs because of this reason. We do not keep them trimmed and balanced correctly. Now, I was talking with a lady, lady yesterday, and she said she didn't want to put shoes on her mules. And I said, so it's okay to cripple them. And she says, what do you mean? I said, the problem is you look at your mules, you've got contracted heels. Somewhere it's got a contracted heel. She says, well, I don't have any shoes on my horses. I said, do you know what a contracted heel is? No, she didn't. So I told her and explained it to her that one part of the heel will come over push on the frog, make the frog small, and the frog pumps blood up and down the leg. So it's very important. I also pointed out to her, one of my clients, best from my horseback, we went on a ride from, from Mexico to Canada. I didn't go on a full ride, I went on a ride, all right? 
people were coming from back east barefoot horses and in within the within the first seven days they were crippled up enough they had to put him in a trailer and go back home now one of the things she mentioned to me was she had an abscess outside of the foot now get this you've got your hoof wall and outside of the hoof wall was an abscess where did that come from here's where it came from here's the side of the foot here right here this is the hoof wall this right here is your lamina or white line this right here is your coffin bone all right when this gets to be a problem you've got a crippled animal so what's the lamina do it is the shock absorber between the outside wall and your what is it called yeah cannon bone i mean uh, i lost it uh huh. coffin? coffin bone thank you okay coffin bone coffin bone okay reason i say coffin bone when it rotates he's dead he's done you have to put him down okay so here's what happened she's not putting shoes on her mules so a gravel went up through the white line okay and come out the hoof wall out here now what happened now we've got a channel for manure for urine for dirt to go up through that white line do you think that is very healthy no it is not okay because now we got a chance what happens we have the coffin bone that needs the protection from the lamina and the lamina protects the outside wall from creating problems with the coffin bone so when we start destroying that white line with a gravel it's what it is that gravel crawl up through that white line and came out they some people call it an abscess I just call it a gravel. That gravel came out, okay? So now what, what have we done? We've created an area that will, can, can, can be a disease problem. We've got, clean, we've got an area that now is dirty, and it needs to be rinsed out with, with, with uh, Clorox and things like this. So that's another reason, folks, that you want to put shoes on when you're spending a lot of time riding. Flat ground or not, any of the slightest little tiny gravel can go up and cripple your mule and could be a cripple for life. So why do I put shoes on? I put shoes on to keep the contracted heels from making my frog small so that I've got a good, healthy, fat, fat frog, frog. Why do I put shoes on? So that when a gravel goes up through there, it doesn't destroy the protection between the outside wall and my cannon bone. Remember, what do I call that? What's that? Cough and bone. Cannon bones up here, coffin bone. All right, gotta have that protection. That's what that lamina is for, folks. And when that lamina is nice, look at the lamina. You know how creamy and colored is it? Nice and white colored. If it gets dark, you're in trouble. All right, so we've got a follow-up to Stephanie's question. Stephanie originally asked, when leading my mule, he keeps his distance but keeps his ears back flat. And when uh, we stop, his ears go straight up. How do you read this? Uh, you had said, what are you using? She says, rope halter to lead. What are you using to lead? She says, rope halter from you with lead line, no buckle. Hey, I love her. Great. Okay. Okay. Now then what it is, it's an attitude. All right. So put the come along hitch on. And when the mule starts kind of pinning his ears, like saying, I don't really want to follow you. You put that come along hitch on and you bump him. You ask him. Knock the attitude off. The attitude is still there. Bump them harder. Bump, bump. Knock the attitude off. Now, let me ask you this. Could you send me a picture of your mule with your adjusted rope halter on? Here's what happens. Here are Here is the ears sticking up right here. We want the back of that rope to be right in behind the ears, not clear down the neck right directly behind the ears in that kind of a groove okay that's where we want that rope in the back of the head next we want it where the nostrils are flaring we want to have the nost we want to have the knots two fingers above the nostril where it's hitting the sweet place so it could be maybe we got it maybe a little bit of misadjustment but first go with the come along hit and and try that and send me a picture of your rope halter uh, uh on on your mule 
Awesome. Uh, Linda says, uh, if you use the come along rope and Steve's methods, you won't have to tie your mule to brush him. He will stand ground tied real nice. There you go. That's what we like to hear. Myra is watching, says overcast and hoping for rain here in Southern California. You're reading our mind. We'd love to get some rain here in Southern Arizona. Using your halter is very effective on my new mule. I'm working on getting a rope over her ears so I can use the come along, which may not even be necessary, but is more effective and easier on me. It may also help make her stand ground tied. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. The come along hitch because it here as good as that halter is, you still can make some mistakes with it pulling. It's not going to be as effective as the come along hitch. Again, that's one of the things that that Dave, when we're videoing and this sort of thing. Yeah. That Being in the saddle is one thing. We're going to be seeing people in the saddle, but on that ground, make sure you got good communication, you know, and, and send me a picture. Let me take a look. See, uh, Nancy is watching from mountain city, Tennessee. Walter is watching from East Anza, California. We've got Sherry watching from Tovar and Mazo, Maine, uh, nice and 51 degrees. Uh, Nancy says sunny and warm. Just got my first two donkeys. Uh, my first donkey two weeks ago. Hey, there we go. Thank you for your call, Steve. I still cannot get the come along on him, but at least now he's coming to me when I'm at the fence or at the at the gate. Don't give up. Don't give up. Um, okay, Steve, here we go. He said, now here's, here's a good question. Nancy says, I'm bribing him with carrots, but I've learned a lot more than uh, to a day. So is this an okay moment to use a treat to get something done specific or would we still not want to be using a treat in this instance? I, I, you know, a treat is going to end up costing you in the long run. Okay. When do I use a treat? When I have one that's hard to catch, probably more than anything else. It's hard to catch. Now, if you want to teach tricks, use a clip. Let's see if we lost Steve Any? there. You still there, Steve? I turned off my video. See if that would help a little bit. It's it's cutting up. Can you see me? Can you hear or can you hear me? I can hear you, but all of a sudden you're looking down. It's like you stopped. Yeah, I turned my video I turned my video off. Let's see if that helps. It started cutting out. So tell me um the only time you'll really use a treat is when you want them to come to you. That's where it dropped off. Yeah, when I have a hard time when when one doesn't come to me, then I'll use a treat. Now, I'll tell you something else I like to do. I learned this from Nick West years ago. I'll take a bunch of cologne and I'll put it all over my gloves. I'll, I'll even put it on my, my shirt sleeves. And Nick said to me one time, he said, Steve, do you ever wonder why them horses always come? He always mentioned horses. Why the horses come to the pretty girls and not to the ugly old guys? And I said, Nick, I hadn't really given any thought. He says, because they smell good. He said, so take your young colts, and once you're training, put a lot of cologne on your gloves, and they will want to sniff around and look for you. That's different than actually biting something and chewing something. That's where people lose digits, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, one of my favorite stories, and you, you probably remember this. Yeah. I had my students at Pierce College. We were we went we would go to horse shows. Let's see. Down sop and wet. I think we're getting disconnected again there. Um gosh, we still got a lot of questions to get through, folks, but I think uh, the weather, the weather seems to be affecting Steve's internet connection out there, Steve. It keeps dropping in and dropping out. Maybe let's do this. Let me turn off. I'll just leave my video on. Let me turn off your video uh, or actually you go ahead and turn off your video. Let's see if we can just have the audio going. Let's see if we can do that. So go ahead, turn off your video, Steve, keep the call going, but turn off your video. We'll try it just with audio. Uh, can you hear okay. me still? You can hear me? Can you hear? Yes, I can hear. 
Okay, it's still cutting in and out. Let's give it one more go, and if it just keeps if it keeps bugging out on us, we'll we'll probably just call it a a day. Uh, which I feel very fortunate. We've do, done so many of these shows, and I think we've only had one other time where the audio and video was too difficult. So, um, you let's pick up where you left off. You said now you've probably heard this story before, but I'm going to tell you. Can you hear me? Okay, Dave. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, very good. Okay, so. I'm with my students at Pierce College in mm -hmm. L.A., and we usually would go to, to uh, horse shows over the weekend and see how people communicated with their animals. We would talk about it. Well, here's this lady. She was a 90-pound soccer wet, little tiny thing, and she had this huge Clydesdale horse, 17 hands high, somewhere in a 2,000-pound range, huge horse. Can you picture that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Uh, the horse was just moving all around, just she couldn't control it. She had a snaffle bit in his mouth with a chain running through the snaffle bit, and it was all she could do. The, the horse was literally raising her in the air. So one of my students, students, Susan Sonnenberg, she went quickly and got one of my come-along ropes, and I got over there to help the lady out. I said, ma'am, can I help you? She says, yes, please. Now, Dave, there was baby carriages around. There was little kids. If this big horse got away, it could have been a problem. Yeah. Okay. So I put the come along hitch on this horse. I pulled the bridle off that she had with the bit. And in just a few minutes, I had this horse following me anywhere, doing anything I wanted with that come along hitch. Now, here's the story I want to tell you. This lady had her pointer finger. She showed me her pointer finger was only half there. The other half was gone. She used to feed carrots to this horse. One day she reached up to pet the horse. The horse was thinking it was a carrot, went and grabbed the hold of her finger and shook her around like a rag doll and literally snapped the end of her finger off. Yep. Did I lose you? No, I'm still, no, I'm still there. I mean, that's, that's like worst case scenario. That's that. Yes. But the, but the thing is, is there's a valuable lesson in that. Um, yeah. and, and it's not for not because now we're able to hear it. We're able to listen and learn from that experience. And so, I mean, really the big takeaway for treats that I've gotten from you, Steve, is never use treats. One exception might be if I'm trying to get them to come to me. And then once I teach that, done with it. Yeah. 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 yeah and you can actually do that within a round pin. Mm -hmm. One of the big mistakes that people do is they bring their meals home. They turn them loose in a great big pasture and they don't need to do that. Take them home, put them in your... You give them in 10 by 20 stalls or maybe 20 by 20. And that's what they need to be. And your first six months, you do everything with the mule. Do not turn them out. Did I lose you? Yeah, it keeps going in and out. It's about four o'clock. Steve, I think what we're going to need to do, I, I think just between the internet connection and... Um, you know, possibly. So, oh, we just lost him altogether. So that's, you know what, folks, this just happens. And like I said earlier, um, I'm grateful that uh, I'm grateful that this has only happened one other time in doing this show for the last two and a half years. It's only happened one other time. And uh, and it's just part of the game, part of doing business, right? When you're doing stuff on the internet, you are subject to the internet. So I just want to say thank you everyone for hanging out with us, for everyone who tried to stick it through and, um, you know, stick out and, uh, you know, see us through these technical difficulties and just the internet connectivity. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, here he's ringing. He's ringing. Did we get it? Yeah, I think we're just, I think we're going to call it a day. It just seems like it keeps going in and out, in and out, even with just audio, Steve, it's keep breaking up. Oh, darn. I well. know. But you know what? I was telling folks, I'm grateful. This is only the second time in over two years that this has happened. Yes. Yeah, Which that's is not great. bad. No, I mean, no, that's great. Yeah. And so I think I we've got a 99.8% success rate, <laughs> success rate, which I'll take that. But uh, uh, this Saturday is the clinic. Folks, the last opportunity to purchase spectator tickets is tomorrow. You go to muleranch.com, just type in spectator. You'll find tickets there. Get them. They will not be available on Friday. They will not be available at the door. Um, and uh, and we want you there. We want you to be able to come and experience. It's going to be a lot of fun. Steve, anything you want to say before we're all done today? 
No, I, I'm just sorry we can't go on more with some questions and stuff, but by golly, next Wednesday, we got a new program we're going to try, so by golly, folks, maybe we'll do some all brand new thing. Yeah, hopefully that'll be good. Hey, let's do this. Folks, if you asked a question today and we were not able to get to it because of the connectivity, go ahead and send a message to support at muleranch.com. A couple things will happen. Number one, if I can answer it for you right away or if Steve can answer it for you right away, we'll do that. Number two, we'll go ahead and we'll add it to next week's program and we'll answer it there. And number three, if there are any resources that we have on the website, any articles or uh, YouTube videos, I'll send you links to those so you get the answers that you need because we want you to get out there, get results, gain trust, and experience the joy of owning a mule or donkey. Um, Steve, we'll see you on Saturday. Sound good? Looking forward to it, partner. All right. Thank you, everybody. Talk soon. Bye-bye.